Madam Speaker, I yield myself five minutes. Gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm going to come here and uh, speak from the heart. I, I don't want to read a speech because I think it's important to, to speak uh, from the heart. Uh, I'm not here to point fingers. I'm not here to chastise anyone. Uh, I'm not here to um, talk about what might have been. I support our soldiers. I support the war against terror. But I rise in support of this resolution, which is Congress's responsibility. We have to look, Madam Speaker, at the current situation in Iraq as it is. Not as we might wish it to be, but as it is. Several years ago, I voted to give the, pre the President the authority to go to war in Iraq based on what we were told then. I must say that I regret that vote. I regret it not only because no weapons of mass destruction were found or that there was no connection between Al-Qaeda and Iraq at that time, even though we were told there was. There was obviously faulty intelligence. We'll never quite know if we were misled or if our intelligence was bad. But it's clear, one thing is very, very clear to me, that this war has been mishandled from the beginning. The President is now talking about a surge of sending 21,500 more troops to Iraq. When we first went into Iraq, you know, I'm a big believer if you're going to do something, you do it right or you don't do it at all. We were told by General Shinseki that there were not enough troops in Iraq. Not enough troops at that time, several years ago, to be able to protect the borders, to protect insurgents from coming in, to protect people that would do us ill from coming in. And his statements were dismissed. Not only were his statements dismissed, but then he was dismissed. And now here it is, three or four years later, we're being told that the solution is to send more troops again. It's obvious to me that this is too little, too late. The war in Iraq has morphed into a civil war. It's obvious to anybody who looks at the situation that the Shia and the Sunni are fighting each other and our brave men and women are caught right in the middle of it. Eighty percent of the people of Iraq on both sides don't want us there. And more and more our people are becoming sitting ducks. I grieve for the more than 3,200 brave Americans who have died and the countless thousands more who have been injured. But it's one thing, Madam Speaker, to die in fighting for the freedom of your country, defending your country. It's quite another to die in a senseless civil war that more and more we see we cannot control, nor probably should we attempt to anymore. You know, from the minute we came into Iraq, unfortunately, not only did we have no troops, there was mistake after mistake. We fired the Ba'ath Party people, so we had people that were angry at us to begin with. We haven't been able to give the Iraqis what we said we would give them. They find that their way of life is worse now than ever before. We weren't greeted as liberators, but we were greeted as occupiers. And when we look at what we supposedly are there to protect, we look at the leader of Iraq, Mr. Mal 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 Maliki. He's propped up by the al Sadr Brigade, viciously anti-American, viciously killing Iraqis. He can't go after them. They're the base of his support. And we're to believe that somehow he is a great patriot and is fighting for democracy in Iraq. We talk about al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda is certainly a threat. I'm a New Yorker. I will never, ever forget September 11th, 2001. And we have to go after Al-Qaeda. And we have to fight terrorism. But I believe that the war in Iraq 
has now become a distraction against the war on terror. So we say by staying in Iraq, are we fighting the war on terror or are we making it more difficult? I yield myself 30 more seconds. The gentleman is recognized yes. for 30 seconds. Yes. A troop surge won't work. There are other priorities that we have. Our young people are sitting ducks. This is more and more like Vietnam. You can't leave and you can't stay. We support our troops. The surge won't, won't work. Congress needs to send this message to the President and to Iraq and to the world. Yield back.